Have you ever wondered why the tax rates are so high and where your hard earned tax dollars are actually going? In this video I'll be breaking this down showing you exactly how the New Zealand government has spent the taxes it generated in 2022 and 23. But it's not all just about the boring government stuff. We'll also be talking about some of the wacky and unexpected ways that taxes are used, so stay tuned for that. On this channel I post a lot of content about the best practices to manage your money effectively. Today we'll be turning the tables and revealing how well the government manages theirs in running the country. These figures I'll be showing come straight from the New Zealand Treasury and I'll be putting these numbers in context as a percentage of the overall spending, the cost for every person in the country and how the spending has changed versus last year. You work hard for your money so it's only fair that you know how the tax component is being spent. Now if you're new to my channel I post a lot of content around personal finance and investing. Please make sure to subscribe down below to make sure you follow all of my future videos on interesting financial topics such as this one. Let's start by looking at the high level breakdown of taxes collected and spent over recent years. In 2018 the government collected revenue of $98 billion and spent $86 billion meaning they had a surplus of nearly $12 billion. Today the government collects $144 billion in revenue and spends $157 billion of this meaning it is running at a deficit of nearly $13 billion a year which is likely to be funded by debt. What is clear from this is that there has been a substantial increase over the last 5 years in the amount of money that the government is both generating and spending. On the right hand side I have taken account of the annual inflation numbers for the September quarter. If we increase the 2018 budget by the inflation rate each year the actual amounts earned and spent are much greater. Let's now jump into the tax take for the 2022-23 year. If you wanted to see a full breakdown of where the government makes its money, here it is. Inland revenue of course is the government's biggest earner, generating 78% of their total income. Right up the top is the PAYE tax paid by those earning a wage or a salary. This generates $45 billion a year or about a third of the government's income. Under that you have the GST of $28 billion which is collected on the sale of most goods and services. And under that we have company tax which generates $22 billion a year for the government. As you go down the list you can see some items like student loan repayments of $1.6 billion, gaming duties of $321 million among many others. If you look at the colourful column on the right of company tax it's interesting to see that they have paid 26% more tax in the past year which could indicate companies are making substantially more in profit this year from higher sales and prices. The next highest income generator for the government is customs which contributes 12% of the government's income. This is made up mainly of GST, duties and excises on imported goods. Between both the IRD and customs they generate in total over 90% of the government's revenue. Other interesting areas where the government makes money is their dividends from state owned enterprises such as Air New Zealand of $600 million a year, emissions trading scheme sales of over $3 billion, road user charges of about $1.8 billion, Kiwi Build housing sales of $188 million, police infringement tickets of $76 million and a raft of other items. So as you can see the government has a wide range of income sources. With income out of the way let's now jump into the breakdown of where it all goes. The department with the biggest share of the pot is easily the Ministry of Social Development which accounts for about 25% of the government's total spending. Superannuation takes up roughly half of this supporting everyone over the age of 65 with their retirement costs. On a per capita basis this comes out to about $3,800 per person. There are also many safety net services in New Zealand including the $3.5 billion paid to job seekers, 2.3 billion for those requiring accommodation assistance and 2.2 billion for supported living among others. Student loans are another interesting item here as we saw this on the income side too. The government receives 1.6 billion in student loan repayments each year and pays out roughly 1.7 billion. Given there are likely to be more students today than in the past the scheme is nearly self-sufficient which is interesting to see. Other items include 600 million in student allowances, winter energy payments of 500 million, various wind downs of COVID assistance and several apprenticeship and training schemes to get people ready for the workforce. Next up is the Ministry of Health which runs our health network. To provide free healthcare for the entire country the cost comes out to only $4,600 per person or 15% of the government spending which is extremely good value for such an important service. Hospitals and specialist services such as mental health clinics are right up the top which cost $11 billion a year to run followed by other health services of $8 billion. Other interesting items include the COVID-19 response such as the health response, immunisation program and vaccine purchases all of which have had substantial declines in funding as we emerge from the pandemic. In total pandemic healthcare related activities in the 2022 and 23 year come to just under a billion dollars. A year ago however this was a whopping 4.7 billion. 
Other interesting items include allocating $250 million a year towards a new hospital for Dunedin, $20 million towards problem gambling services, and legal expenses which are up over 500% on last year, perhaps due to the Ministry of Health having to attend more court cases in the aftermath of the pandemic. After that, we have the Ministry of Education, which provides free schooling for Kiwi kids through primary and secondary school, and heavily subsidised tertiary education, or universities and polytechnics. In total, it requires $20.2 billion in government spending each year, or 12.8% of its overall budget. Primary schools are the biggest cost, at nearly $4 billion a year, secondary at $2.9 billion, and tertiary at $2.5 billion. Early learning services are also covered, totaling $2.4 billion a year, learning support of $600 million, and fees-free courses of $380 million. Other interesting items here include the school lunch program, which costs $257 million, school furniture costs of $82 million, among many others. After social development, healthcare and education, we have the IRD. The first item is simply the passing through of KiwiSaver contributions from employees and employers. The second item is family tax credits, which cost $2.3 billion, and support families with young children. The third item is KiwiSaver tax credits, which is the $521 the government sends to your KiwiSaver account once a year if you've contributed over about a grand. Other interesting items include the cost of living payment of $800 million and the $660 million bill where the government wrote off student loan debt. After that, we have the Ministry of Transport, which costs $9 billion a year to run, or nearly 6% of the overall spending. The largest amount of nearly $3 billion is dedicated towards a range of projects to reduce the death toll, increase the use of public transport, encourage less car use, and maintaining of the road and rail networks. KiwiRail absorbs a further $900 million a year, Auckland City Rail Link another half a billion, and the Auckland Light Rail Unit, which has yet to start works, costs another $68 million. One interesting line here is the clean vehicle discount rebate. A total of $123 million has been assigned to subsidising the purchase of low emission vehicles. As you can see here, there are many areas of government spending in the transport area. Next is the Treasury, which costs over $8 billion a year to run, or 5% of the government budget. The biggest item here by far is the $4.5 billion that goes towards debt servicing. At the start of the video, I showed that the government was operating at a deficit, where the incomings were less than the outgoings. This causes the government to go further into debt, to fund the spending, which later requires the government to pay interest on that debt. To put this into perspective, the current interest bill is over five times higher than the running costs for the Department of Conservation. Another interesting item is the New Zealand Superfund contributions of $2.5 billion a year. This is a funny one, as the government is running at a deficit to fund these contributions, meaning they're taking on debt to fund their stock market investments. Even in the retail investment space, we know that buying stocks with margin is a very risky game. Aside from these, the government also spends $55 million on its venture fund and other areas as you can see. The Ministry of Business, Innovation and Enterprise, or MB for short, costs the government a further $7 billion a year or 4.6% of its budget. The largest expenses here relate to ACC, which covers Kiwis for accidents. They've split this into many areas, and by summing those up, it comes to around $2 billion a year. As there are quite a lot of items here, I'm going to just name a couple interesting ones. As I scroll through, if there are any you want to take a closer look at, just pause the video as I go down. Advertising New Zealand as a tourism destination came to $111 million. Production grants to the film industry, such as Lord of the Rings and things when they were filmed, came to $51 million. And as you can see, just a long list of miscellaneous items. Next up is the Defence Force, which costs a total $4.9 billion a year, or 3% of overall government spending. This covers a range of costs related to Army, Navy, Air Force and peacekeeping operations. There isn't a lot to see for this one, so I'll move along. Next is the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, which costs $4.5 billion a year, which is just under 3% of the total budget. The government spends almost $1.5 billion a year in acquiring new public housing stock. A further $800 million is used to prepare land for development, and $130 million was paid out as first home grants. $96 million was also spent on increasing the stock of affordable housing. Next up is the Ministry for the Environment, which costs just under $3 billion a year, or 1.85% of the budget. This ministry is essentially paid for, as they bring in $3.4 billion a year by selling units under the Emissions Trading Scheme. This makes them one of the rare departments that actually makes money in the government. The surplus allows them to self-fund many projects, such as $70 million towards improving freshwater quality, 48 million towards fighting climate change, and 4.5 million towards the cleanup of the Waikato River. 
Next up are the police and the Department of Corrections, which each individually cost about 2.5 billion a year, or 1.5% of the budget. What the police do is pretty self-explanatory, but on the corrections side, the cost to run the prison network costs $1.2 billion a year. The Ministry of Justice is next, costing $2.1 billion a year, or 1.3% of the budget. The largest amounts are for the Treaty of Waitangi settlements of up to $350 million a year, but also include the cost to run the court system and pay for the necessary judges and other staff. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade costs $1.8 billion a year, with about a billion of this going towards humanitarian assistance abroad, largely in the Pacific Islands. There are also costs related to foreign policy, about $87 million a year going towards work in Antarctica, and about a million going towards Expo 2020, which was a showcase to promote New Zealand in Dubai. Oranga Tamariki, or the Ministry for Children, costs 1.4 billion, or about 0.9% of the budget, for the work it does to intervene in situations where children are in danger. The Ministry of Primary Industries costs a further 1.2 billion, or 0.8% of the budget, to mainly protect our farming and aquaculture industries from any biosecurity hazards that could risk their industries. The Ministry of Defence, which funds some of the capital expenditure related to the Defence Force, costs a further $1.2 billion a year, mainly to invest in better technology and vehicles for their war and peacekeeping activities. The Department of Internal Affairs, which processes passports, grants citizenship, among a few other areas, costs $880 million a year to run, or about 0.5% of the government budget. Interesting sub-items that you wouldn't usually expect include $30 million going towards a royal commission into abuse cases, VIP chauffeured vehicles of $9 million, film classifications of $3 million, and $386,000 that paid for the domestic travel of former prime ministers. I don't know how many former prime ministers we have, but it sounds like quite a lot. The Department of Conservation costs $850 million a year, which sounds a bit low, with the largest amounts going towards the preservation of the natural environment. $50 million went towards the capital expenditure to upkeep their buildings, $27 million towards keeping protected areas predator-free, and $921,000 towards a memorial and museum for the Pike River disaster. The remaining ministries are quite small. As I scroll down, I'll note some of the more interesting highlights. $172 million goes towards funding public broadcasters such as TVNZ and Radio New Zealand. $23 million goes towards Māori television. $544 million is spent on land information activities. $109 million is spent on running the 2023 census. And GCSB, which is the government spying arm that busted Kim.com, costs $234 million a year to run. Parliamentary service that funds all of the costs related to the politicians and operating in Parliament costs $212 million a year. And the office of the Prime Minister and Cabinet costs $151 million a year. And finally, we have security intelligence, which costs $100 million a year. I hope you found this video interesting and learned more about where your taxes go. It's important to understand that running a country is not cheap, and there are so many essential services that we rely on that are paid for by our taxes. We have a superannuation scheme, free educational and health systems for all, and if you compare what we get for our tax rate versus places like California, we're pretty damn lucky. If you enjoyed the video and have yet to subscribe, please make sure to do so down below. You can keep up to date with all my future videos in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.